Okay, so Euclid's parallel postulate says that if you have a line and a point, there's only one line that goes through that point that's parallel to the other line. And this postulate leads to all sorts of lovely other theorems with the alternate interior angles and such. It also leads to a neat proof about triangles having 180 degrees. Um, but you don't need to really know all that to be able to answer this question because um, if you look at vertical angles are congruent, vertical angles are these guys. They have nothing to do with parallel lines at all. That's ridiculous. Um, so this is the only one that you could certainly prove without parallel lines because vertical angles have nothing to do with parallel lines. So this is the only one that can be proved without using his postulate. Check B is our answer. Done. Uh, five is the same idea if the statement is false about parallel lines, well, we could still talk about supplementary angles summing to 180 degrees because that's simply the definition of supplementary that has nothing to do with proving anything. We could certainly still prove that vertical angles are congruent because that has nothing to do with parallel lines. Um, base angles of, the, of an isosceles triangle being congruent there are no parallel lines in that. It has nothing to do with parallel lines. This guy's out. So even if you didn't know the proof comes from this parallel lines, you could still say that the answer must be that the sum of every triangle is 180 degrees. So if this statement were false, then you wouldn't be able to prove that statement. And that's all they're going for. I'll link you to some videos with the proof of this and a neat thing about Euclidean geometry and stuff that makes these problems much more interesting. These are pretty boring, but I guess that's okay. Okay, so in problem four, we said we could prove that vertical angles were congruent without using um, the parallel postulate. So here it is. Uh, it's just that if we know that the measure of angle, if one and two are linear pairs, they add up to eight, 180 degrees. And then if two and three are linear pairs, they add up to 180 degrees. And so if they both equal 180, then angle, measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three by substitution. And then you just subtract out angle two, and you get that the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three, which means that the angles are congruent. So we can prove it without touching parallel lines. Check. Uh, so that also came up in 5. The other thing we said we could prove in 5 without touching parallel lines was an isosceles triangle. The base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. So here's what that would look like. Um, you just prove uh, you have an isosceles triangle, so by definition the legs are congruent. Um, you draw an altitude. Uh, definition of, yeah, so the altitude makes right angles with the base, and then you can say that those triangles are right triangles because they have right angles, and then you can prove the two triangles congruent by hypotenuse leg, and therefore their, all their pieces are congruent by corresponding parts, so congruent triangles are congruent. So we proved that base angles of an isosceles triangles are congruent without touching parallel lines. And then the one proof that we did need parallel lines for was to prove that uh, the sum of the angles of a triangle are 180 degrees. Or this is 180 degrees. So this is one's kind of neat. Uh, you know that 1 and 2 and 3 must all add up to 180. Um, because there are 180 degrees in a straight line. This is known. And then you need Euclid's postulate to say that the alternate interior angles are congruent, that 1 is the same as 4 and 3 is the same as 5. So if you replace 1 with 4 and 3 with 5, ha ha ha, we've got that 4 plus 2 plus 5 makes 180. Check. So there we go.